the world's a dangerous place. Get the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. A laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. This week on Gun Talk, Tom talks with the CEO of a major gun maker who's giving away guns. Ruger shows up to spill the beans about their new rifles and handguns. And Tom talks precision with the maker of the finest target rifles in the world. All that plus your calls. 1-866-TALK-GUN. Call now, and here's Tom. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. Hey, welcome. I'm Tom Gresham. Glad that you could be with us. A lot of ways for you to participate. Uh, By the way, the show is called Gun Talk because guess what? We talk about guns. All the time, constantly, can't stop, you can't make me stop. (laughs) Because we like guns. We like guns and things that go bang and optics and ammo and everything else. If you'd like to participate, uh, let me give out some info right here at the beginning. Gun Talk. Call us at 1-866-825-5486. And honestly, who remembers all that stuff? Try it this way. One, Tom, talk, gun, That'll get you in here. You can shoot me an email, Tom at GunTalk.com. we got the Twitter feed running. Over on Twitter, I'm at GunTalk. A lot of things going on. We're going to be giving away guns later on today. Lots of cool things happening. News breaking out there. The mothers demand action. Some of them are actually setting up a mechanism by which open carry, people who open carry guns can be executed by the police. Filing False reports, calling in false reports. It's called swatting. We'll talk about that as we go forward. We also have an an online uh, forum that says, Tom Gresham, that's me, ignores the Second Amendment of the United States of America. Yeah, okay. We might just touch on that one. (laughs) We have a lot of things going on, a lot of cool things. But I will tell you, this is my favorite time of the year. It's cooler. Fall is here, put the spring in your step, you feel like you just want to spend some time outdoors, and it's just when we start hearing about the new guns coming out, and it's, um, some companies wait until late fall or even to the SHOT Show in January to announce their guns. One company in particular does it. It's kind of a just-in-time deal, and joining us right now to talk about that is Mark Gurney from Ruger. Mark, you guys don't wait. When they're ready, you throw them out there, don't you? Yes, we do, although it's always tempting to get them out sooner than they're ready, but we have to wait until they're ready. But once they're there, we're off to the race. Uh, yeah, letting them go before they're ready is a bad thing, because you do not want to have them go out and then come back in. That's something to be avoided. Love it. Yeah, then you become an ex-gun company in a hurry. We don't want to do that. Yeah, that's right. Ruger has done very well. So, uh, And I guess we should explain that in the old days, everybody, all the gun companies waited until late fall, uh, even winter, to announce their guns. And I don't know, it's been several years now when Ruger changed its policy and essentially said, look, when we've got a gun ready, as soon as we have enough made, we're going to put it out there. We started that, I think, uh, it was 2007, maybe, with the SR9. Mm -hmm. And we had several thousand of them, and we shipped them four four at a time in uh, in a box to dealers sight on team. They didn't know what they were getting. They just knew they were getting four or something. You mean they didn't even order them? You just said, here they are. Well, they ordered them, but they didn't know what they were getting. (laughs) Now, now that's good salesmanship, i got to tell you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When you can get somebody to Uh, buy something, they don't know what they're getting. Now, I have bought something and turned out I didn't know what I was getting, but that's a whole different thing. Right, right, right. All right, so I've been looking at the series of announcements you guys have had over the last couple of months. Uh, you got first of all, you had the, the left-handed Ruger American rifle, which I immediately said, want one, got to have one. I shoot off the left shoulder. So for those of us who uh, are left-eye dominant as well as left-handed, let me just thank you immediately. Well, oh, you're very welcome. And although a number of people who shoot left-handed, they've been doing so with right-handed guns for so long mm-hmm. that they don't actually go looking for left-handed guns. And, you know, they're comfortable with the right-handed guns, and they don't know they can switch. Now, with the right. American, it's just a great gun all around. No reason not to switch to a left-handed gun. Well, and the other thing is that the price is so darn attractive. I mean, 
Yeah. What's, uh, what's the retail on the uh, suggested retail on the American? Uh, I think it's uh, four forty nine is the MSRP, but no, nobody pays that really. So you yeah, get, I mean, you get like, it down in the threes. Yeah, it's, it's you know I think yeah MSRP is like four and a half, and it's you're going to be looking at three and a half or even below that if right. you know, shop around. Uh, correct. You know, it's, and, it's a stunningly uh, you know, it doesn't good feel rifle. like an inexpensive gun. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like I, I, I can attest to that. That thing shoots like a house of fire. It also has, and I got to say, for those of us who've been around a while, it just just every time I say that, it's wonderful. It is a Ruger with a great trigger. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had a collection of gun writers, you know, put together for some voice of the customer some time ago, and I asked them all to say what what's one word that comes to mind when you think of Ruger now, and uh, it was it was. Um, one guy who said, triggers don't suck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word, huh? <laughs> yeah, Jeff Quinn, he, did, he couldn't get the one word part of it down, but I, I considered it still a pretty good answer. That, that's a good answer. So what else have you guys been turning out in the last uh, few weeks and months? Well, the, the big deal is that last week was our, our gas gun, our AR-556. So that's a, um, you know, your basic AR. Yeah. Uh, but... The MSRP I think is seven forty nine, but you should be able to get it retail for about six hundred bucks. I can okay. see a couple of places online had them for less. And now, it, it, up until it's now, Ruger, though. Well, yeah, but up until now, a Ruger's ARs, their MSRs have been piston guns, right? Correct. And, and of course, that that makes the price higher. It has to be. Yeah, the uh, it's an absolutely fabulous gun. I, I have more than one, as you might imagine. Mm-hmm. Uh, two stage piston. It, it's just the hot rod, high tech gun, but it's not a cheap date. Right. Uh, our, our little AR five five six is six hundred dollars. The gas gun, just like all the others that have been made for what fifty years now, that mm-hmm. worked quite well. Uh, yes, you have to spend a little more time cleaning it compared to a piston gun, but other than that, um, it chugs very long. So I think it's only six and a half pounds. And, um, of course, we cold hammer forge our own barrel. And the way we got the cost down, you know, we not only cold hammer forge our own barrel, but we machine our own uppers, our own lowers, mm. our own bolts, bolt carriers, and gas block in-house. And it was the first gun to be made in our new facility down in North Carolina in May- Mayadan. So, and not just, just made, but say- designed, engineered, and built. Okay, yeah, touch on that again, because I'm not sure everybody quite caught that. This is now a gun being made in your brand-new facility in North Carolina. Correct. So, you know, a zillion years ago, Ruger started in Connecticut, but it didn't take long for all manufacturing to move out to you know, where I am in New Hampshire. And then not long after that, we expanded in Arizona. And so if you add up the 1,500 employees that we have nationwide, there's only like 25 in Connecticut left. Hmm. Uh, so the bulk, the, all the bulk of our work is done, you know, the manufacturing work is done in those two places. But right. over the last couple of years, we're bursting at the seams. We have no more room. <laughs> so we searched around to find a good spot, and made in North Carolina was just ready-made for us. We had a, a, a great building, a wonderful workforce. The people that are there are so happy to be working for Ruger. I can tell you, I was, I was flying there. Uh-huh. In the airport, I think it was, it was Charlotte, maybe like an hour away. I, I don't remember. But uh, as I got through TSA, got through security, this very stern-looking TSA agent comes walking directly toward me. Uh-oh. And, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Uh-oh. <laughs> she puts up a hand. Thank you for coming to Montgomery County. Really appreciate Ruger being here. Really? Not really Is surprised. That... Yes. That's I have Ruger delightful. shirt on it. <laughs> Hey, Mark, hold on a second. Take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about some of the other guns that Ruger's bringing out. I, I, I'm telling you, this is, we're going to be looking at an avalanche of new guns coming out. Pent-up demand. Uh, we're going to have guns that were sitting on the shelves or at least on the drawing boards for the last couple of years. And we're going to talk about why that's the case. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back with more Gun Talk. Springfield Armory presents the Gear Up promotion. Until October 31st, customers who purchase any new Springfield Armory pistol can sign up to receive three additional magazines and a free double bag pouch by visiting gearup.springfield-armory.com. 
That's a value of up to 135 bucks. XDs, XDMs, the XDS, and all 1911s. To learn about all the Springfield Armory firearms, go to springfield-armory.com. You already know Liberty safes are great values. Now they're offering an even sweeter deal for Gun Talk listeners. At LibertySafe.com, click on the Fat Boy Safe and type in Tom. Liberty will give you up to $250 off your purchase. Protect the things you value most. LibertySafe.com, click the Fat Boy Safe, promo code Tom, save up to $250. That's LibertySafe.com. LibertySafe.com. Looking for shooting instruction but don't know where to go? Well, we have it, and you can access hours of training and safety videos, which you can watch on your home computer. On GunTalkTV.com, we have top competitive shooters, the best in self-defense trainers, and folks who have hunted all over the world, helping you learn which gun to buy, how to use it, how to store it safely, and everything else you need to be a safe and competent shooter. We also have gun makers showing off their newest rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran shooter or a complete beginner. You'll find what you need at GunTalkTV.com. You can check it out for free, and you can get full access for only $5.95 a month. That gives you unlimited access to hundreds of videos, and we're adding more all the time. Run the videos over and over to make sure you understand what's being said. Skip around. You're in control. Get smarter, shoot better. Visit GunTalkTV.com. The Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. Introducing your new best friend in home defense, Guard Dog from Federal Premium Ammunition. With low recoil and reliable feeding, Guard Dog is all the protection you need. Guard Dog features a patented full metal jacket construction with an expanding polymer which minimizes overpenetration through interior walls. This dog's got bark and bite. Protect your home and family with Guard Dog Home Defense from Federal Premium Ammunition. and how to apply them in these uncertain times. Keep it here on Gun Talk, and you'll be informed with accurate information and the facts. Now, Gun Talk continues. All right, back with you. We're talking with Mark Gurney from Ruger. Mark, one of the things I was kind of alluding to before we hit the break there is that through 2012, 2013, gun companies were simply making, or they could sell everything they could make. So I know you had, like, lots of products in the pipeline, or at least on the drawing board, you said, here's a whole bunch of new stuff we're going to do. And the thinking had to have been back there is why in the world would we shut down a line to make something new when we could just keep it running the whole time and sell everything? Well, that, that's, I guess, partly true, but not really. Because okay. we, we don't shut down a line ever. I, I can't say that. It's ah. not ever, but it's very, very rare that we stop making a gun. Okay. You look at the Bearcat. When was that? <laughs> the tooling was paid for before I was born. <laughs> so, okay. So, you know, for our our purposes, we were just we just ran out of room, so oh. we had to get the expansion into Mayadan. Gotcha. And then we and then we put the Ruger American Rimfire down there, and that created some room, a little bit of room in the New Hampshire factory. Oh, so you just uh, didn't have that, enough capability to make more guns. Correct. You know, because we have design teams and we have manufacturing cells, and they run pretty much independently mm-hmm. until the design team gets along far enough to start making a cell, and then we have to juggle our resources. But we don't really decide to not develop one new product in favor of keeping another one running. We we want to do them both. We're we're very greedy. I see. Okay. Well, yeah, and and we like that on this end because that means we get to uh, have access to all these different new cool guns. That's, that's right, and we get to play with them too. So there's, That's right. there's ulterior motives all over the place here. 
All right, speaking of that, I mentioned the uh, the left-handed Ruger American. We did not mention the ranch version of the American, which is also new. Isn't that the coolest little thing? It is amazing. With shorter barrel. And now, did I see that right? Is that a threaded barrel? It, it is. The, uh, we can't really ignore the uh, the suppressor movement, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've become a fan. Sure. You know, the, all, all the noise and the blast. I can shoot legally at my home and even safely, but it, it's a little uh, a little too noisy. Right. But exactly. With a, with a suppressor on, it, it takes all the, the noise out from you know from being aggravating and to, to others. Using a suppressor is considerate. Yes, it's polite. There it is. It's uh, civilized. I like that. That's All right, right, so we've got the the Ruger American Ranch Rifle. It's got a shorter barrel. Uh, you can look at that. It's all on the Ruger website, Ruger.com. Uh, LCR, the the Ruger, the coolest little revolver, and that one, 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. And, you know, I, I could ha- have some help from you, Tom, because a lot of people were questioning moon clips. Uh-huh. And it kind of made us scratch our heads because I don't know any better way to carry a reload and to load a revolver more quickly than with moon clips. I consider it an absolute benefit, not a, not a detraction. You know, uh, the, uh, the, if there's, there's only one possible downside to carrying ammo in a moon clip, and that it's, it's bulky, it's round, but you know, that's not a big deal. For those who don't know what we're talking about, a moon clip is a flat piece of, what you call it, spring steel, Mark? Would that yep, be fair? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And, and then it basically you pop in uh, five or six rounds, depending on the revolver, and they all stay there. I mean, you could reload this revolver in one Heart. second. One second. Right. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, but one, li- literally, you can reload this revolver in one to maybe two seconds if you're with a little bit of practice. Right. No fumbling, no messing around. And then when you're done shooting, when you, you know, press the ejector rod, it lifts all the empties out at once, and the moon clip and the empties come out all at once. And if you, you just can drop in another one, but so very fast. And of course, nine millimeter now. You know, nine and and two two three are almost like the new twenty twos these days. We can't we can't buy twenty two. Yeah, you can buy nine cheap though. You can buy nine cheap. Um, yeah. So blasting away with that. Now it's on the same frame as the uh, the three fifty seven, so the steel frame. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little bit heavier than the thirty eight model. It's it's uh, seventeen okay. ounces. I think. So it's just a, a breeze to shoot. It's a wonderful gun. So you, and, can shoot the, uh, you can shoot the full metal jacket, the cheap ammo for practice, and then for self-defense, you can load it up with the good expanding bullets that we have now. And uh, I don't know if you saw it. You probably did. The FBI came out with a report. I just saw it last week that said the yeah, 9 millimeter yeah. is either yeah. as good as or better than the 40 and 45. Right. The, the, I've always thought the answer is they're so close. I don't, I don't know the things that FBI do, but they're good ammo. With good ammo, the results are so close, you're better off chambering and something inexpensive so you can practice a lot with it. Yep, exactly right. And as far as stopping power, there's no difference, especially because, I mean, and the reality is we know this, there's, unless you're just really lucky, there's not a one stop, one shot stopper. No. You're going to have to put multiple hits on. And so anything that helps you make hits is going to help you stop the bad guy. So a little bit less recoil of a nine it may help. So anyway, I just... Right. Touch on that. I want to I'll fast forward to uh, you've got what I think may be the most startling. I don't even know if you it's just a modification or a new model or the LC nine S to me was a, a crazy good improvement on on that gun. Well, thank you. The uh, I, I have an LC nine, not the S model, the old you know the hammer fire one, right? And it has a very long, deliberate trigger pull. You know, kind of like be- a double action only revolver. You're being a bit and, kind. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, for a pocket type gun, you could argue that maybe a long, deliberate double action only pull might be best. Mm-hmm. But it, it can be frustrating at the range if you'd like to shoot targets and and, and practice with something. Well, not, nobody likes long, deliberate <laughs> right. double action only. So this striker system is is sweet. I mean, what a nice trigger. And you do have a main trigger gun, so you can carry it, uh, you know, striker ready with safety on. Mm-hmm. But great little gun, and uh, I, I was happy if I hit the target with my LC9. Now I'm happy if I'm getting in the X ring with the LC9. Yes. So it, it's I, certainly an improvement. I think that's exactly a good way to describe it. This is going, you're going to shoot better with it. 
the trigger is so much phenomenally improved. It was like I just picked it up and went, holy cow. What I mean, yeah. completely, it's really, it's a different gun. Yes. It's an all, all different gun, but it's still all the good parts that we like about the LC9S. It's a 9mm gun, a full power 9mm, and it's small. something that's not that much bigger than an LCP. Right, exactly. I want to talk about your carry gun. All right, so what else have you guys been cooking up? Uh, well, you did see our. Uh, our 1022, maybe. I know it's, uh, you know, everybody has them, but we have the Collector Series. The collector this Series, is, yeah. This is the uh, 50th anniversary of the 1022 this oh. year. 1964 was the year the 1022 was born. Wow. So we, so we have a 50th anniversary model, and that was the design contest winning model. But we also have a Collector Series, and it's a kind of cool gun. It doesn't cost a whole hell of a lot more, but... Uh, We've got a, a a metal road sign that comes with it, a bumper sticker, uh, a 1964 ad reprint, uh, a cool little pin, mm-hmm. so, a, lot, a lot of little stuff. And uh, you know, the gun only turns 50 once. That's amazing. I have to wait for another 50 years for it to turn 100, like the, the 1911. <laughs> right? uh-huh. That is that is amazing. Now let me. Uh, I'm going to fast forward because we're going to run out of time here. As you have new product, we're not going to have to wait till shot show for these. You're going to keep rolling them out. Absolutely, we're we're just getting warmed up now. Um, but what we like to do is have some portion of a year's production on the shelf. Mm-hmm. When we say on the shelf, you mean at the retailer's shelf. So when uh-huh. you see our our announcements midweek, mm-hmm. you should be able to pick up a gun at your retailer by the weekend. Ooh! So like we we that. put them into the distributor channel. And they get them into the retailers as we're announcing. And I, I would offer that for everybody who say, "Well, how do I stay up on this?" All you have to do is follow us on Twitter. If they go on Twitter, follow me. Uh, I'm Gun Talk there. Every time you have an announcement, I throw it up on Twitter so everybody there will know about it. Mark, we have run out of time here, man. I'm going to have to uh, kick you out the door. Always a pleasure. You got to keep us posted on the new stuff. Okay. Pleasure is mine, Tom. Thank you. All right. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate that. Mark Gardy from Ruger. We couldn't get it all in. Uh, it can never. I mean, these guys are rocking. They are turning out new stuff like crazy. Now check it out. Ruger.com will get you there. Ruger.com. Our number, 866-TALK-GUN. Let's talk gun safety. And why are instructors shooting their students? Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, welcome back. In just a minute, I want to uh, talk a little bit about gun safety. We had several reports of firearms instructors having guns go off in classes, in one case, killing a state trooper. We're going to review and revisit gun safety here in just a minute. But first, I want to get some calls in here. Let's see, uh, line three, Lee is calling out of Kentucky. Lee, you're on Gun Talk. Hi, Tom. Yes, sir. Newspapers put NRA down all the time, and there is one thing we can actually do about it. Okay. Whenever they publish that NAACP is the oldest, largest civil rights organization, Mm -hmm. call up the correction line, point out that NRA is recognized under federal law as a civil rights organization. It's 39 years older than NAACP. And it's got five times as many members. <laughs> That's right. It's got five million members. Come on. It's, uh, it's a good point. I certainly don't expect them to do any kind of retractions. But at the same time, I find there's a couple of things to do. That is not a bad one. The other is, for whatever reason, it's weird. Reporters like to talk about the NRA this, the NRA that, as though the NRA is this cluster of people in D.C., and I find it's helpful occasionally to remind them that, hey, we, me, my wife, my kids, my grandchildren, we're the NRA. We're gun owners. We're the people you're talking about. When, so when you start bad-mouthing them, you're talking about me and my wife and my children and my parents and my barber and my lawyer and my doctor 
and your editor. So I just encourage them to open their eyes and understand that they have bought into a stereotype, which is also a form of profiling, which is also a form of bigotry. Ooh, they hate it when you say that. They hate that. Thanks, Lee. I appreciate that. I too, Jeff, Myrtle Point, Oregon. Jeff, what you got there? Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, I got a 308. It's in uh, Remington 700. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a it's a tactical 20 inch heavy barrel, and mm-hmm. that has the one and 12 twist on it. And okay. could you tell me a reason why they would put a one and 12 twist on that gun? Well, clearly you have something in mind. I would ask you why not. Well, isn't that kind of a slow twist rate for a 308? Because most uh, research I've done, most of those are uh, one and 10. Yeah, but some are one and 12. Uh, how does your shoot? Um, it shoots it shoots good with 150s and 168s. That's the heaviest I've shot of it. The only thing I could think of was, I mean, unless it didn't want you to shoot anything like a 180 in it. What do you, what's your what's your thought? Here's what I have found: is it, it absolutely depends upon the bullet itself, not the weight necessarily. It may be able to shoot some 175s, 180s, great, and then others that are the same weight but a little bit different shape configuration. It won't stabilize. For those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, at a certain length of a bullet, you need a little bit faster twist rate to get it to stabilize. Otherwise, you kind of get a wobble, like a wobbly football that's thrown in a pass. And once it starts to wobble, very bad things happen, like uh, accuracy either goes to heck in a handbasket or they could either, it could actually start to tumble. But there are, I mean, there are sniper, if you will, long range rifles in 308 with 1 in 12 twist rate. And they'll shoot 165s generally with no problem at all. When you start going heavier than that, 168 shouldn't be a problem at all. But beyond that, you just have to test it and see. So you're talking like a, uh, what? now I'm, I'm a little confused. You're talking like the uh, slow twist rate. I mean, there's probably no magic silver bullet for the, the answer I'm looking for. So you're saying like a uh, bullet with a longer ojive or a shorter? Uh, you have to view it. You're just going to have to figure it out. I mean, literally, uh-huh. pick something and shoot it and see if it works. If it doesn't, try a different bullet. And if you look, I guess what I'm actually saying is I think you're trying to find a problem where none exists. Well, no, I'm just kind of looking for an answer of why they would why they would put such a uh, slow twist weight rate that's abnormal to me in, in that particular gun. Well, you know, and it could be that they just had a bunch of barrels and a 1 and 12 designed a little bit more for the lighter bullets, the 150s, 165s, and they went with that. I mean, <laughs> weird stuff happens. Here's my question for you. Did you know what the twist rate was when you bought it? No, I didn't. Okay. No, I, I found that out later when I was cleaning it. I used the old uh, cleaning rod method. Yep, exactly. I, and I'm looking at some reports from other people, and they're, look, they're saying they're getting like uh, three-quarters of an inch groups with a 165 grain bullet this is with a one and 12 and they're getting a, a one and a quarter inch groups with 180s so if you go up to a 180 you probably are going to see your group size expand but uh so probably keep it at the 165 one, 168 range with that one and 12 let's i gotta keep uh, rolling here line one gary is with us out of bethany oklahoma hey gary hey uh thanks for taking my call you bet um i I uh, heard you talking to uh, the guy from Knox Rights about the, what, Silas Vance Jr., I think his name is, the guy from New York City who's shaking down all the knife dealers. And he was saying, talking about one hand opening and assisted opening knives that are decreeing switchblades. And I was wondering how they define one hand opening. Is it those knives that have a little uh, button for lack of, or not on the side of the blade that allows you to flick it open with your thumb, or is it something different than that? No, a one-hand opening knife is literally any knife you can open with one hand. So all of these uh, lock blade knives where you can, it's got a little place on the blade where you can stick your thumb and push it around, or it's got a tab on the blade where you can push your thumb on it and flick it around, or like the uh, Benchmade Axis Lock where you can pull back on the little lock and flip your wrist and it, it snaps open. All of those are one-hand opening knives. Literally, if you can open it with one hand, or no, let's back up. If a 300-pound muscle-bound police officer 
can take 30 or 40 or 50 times to get it right, and one time he can get that blade to flip open, bang, you're going to jail in New York. That's how it works. So, I mean, for those who are saying, well, you wonder what he's talking about, switchblades? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the knives that we carry every day. What they're saying is that it would have to be, I don't know, like an old case knife, you know, a case brand kind of knife or something like that. It's anything that, I mean, every knife that I carry is a one-hand opening knife because I think a one-hand opening knife is a safety knife because if I've got to hold on to a seatbelt, whip my knife out with my other hand, get it open and cut somebody out of there, that's a safety knife. In New York, that knife sends you to jail. 866-TALK-GUN. When we come back, let's talk gun safety. What kind of horror stories have you seen at public ranges? 866-TALK-GUN. The new Walther PPX offers a smooth trigger, ambidextrous magazine release, three integral safeties, rugged construction, and the famous Walther ergonomic grip. All this at a great price. Right now, get a free magazine, holster, and dual mag pouch when you purchase a PPX. Feel the perfect fit of the Walther PPX at your local gun dealer or go to WalthurArms.com for more information. That's WalthurArms.com. Alien Gear Holsters, the most comfortable and concealable holsters on the planet, offers big savings with our new two-holster combo. Buy two complete holsters for as little as $49.88. Choose from any available holster style for the guns of your choice. Alien Gear Holsters are made right here in the USA and include a 30-day trial, forever warranty, and free shell trades for life. Visit AlienGearHolsters.com. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. You are one among many, a growing brotherhood, and yes, sisterhood, of those who choose a concealed carry lifestyle. Those who believe the Second Amendment is as vital to our freedom today as it was more than two centuries ago. Those who embrace the natural right to protect themselves, their loved ones, even perfect strangers, should danger arise. You are one among many, and we've got your back. Carry Taurus and carry on. TaurusUSA.com Want your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? Well, at galleryofguns.com, you can search through thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory. Find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes. And there's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun will be covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. It really is just that easy. Gun Talk with you wherever you go. Now streaming through Stitcher, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, and the Gun Talk app. Available for your Android or iPhone. Just search Gun Talk in the App Store. Now back to Gun Talk. All right, fair warning. I'm going to go on a rant here, okay? A couple stories hit the, the news this week, and they set me off again. One comes out of Pennsylvania. 26-year-old trooper David Kedra was shot by, quote, an an experienced state police firearms instructor, close quote, during a demonstration on how to break down and clean his service weapon when the gun, quote, 
somehow misfired. Close quote. Yeah, you know. You know what happened. Firearms instructor in a class teaching people how to disassemble their guns. More than likely using Glocks because that's the handgun that more police departments use than any other. If you don't have a Glock, you don't know this, but let me explain to you. To disassemble a Glock, you must pull the trigger. Shouldn't be a problem. Four rules of gun safety are always applying, right? All guns are always loaded. Never point the muzzle at anything you're not willing to destroy. That would include a student, would it not? Pointing a gun at a student and pulling the trigger, that would be, most of us would call that a bad thing. It happens all the time, particularly with police officers. Pulling the trigger and it goes bang because it does exactly what it's told to do. We got another one. Where was this one? Illinois, I believe. Technology Center, yeah. Addison, Addison, Illinois. A gun was accidentally discharged by a criminal justice instructor during a class, striking a file cabinet wall. School director Jim Thorne said the instructor, a retired FBI agent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me go over a few things here. Now, I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention. This may save your life. It may save somebody else's life. You understand what a, the concept is of a religious fanatic. Somebody who's always preaching, always, uh, that's top of mind all the time. We have to be gun safety fanatics. We have to be fanatics to the point where we bug everybody around us. Because if we don't, this stuff happens. I came up with something I call the, the three P's. We have to be proactive, peremptory, and we have to have a procedure. Proactive means serving to prepare for, intervene in, or control an expected occurrence. Proactive, we're going to do this all the time. Peremptory. It's a command which is absolute and unconditional, decisive or final. It precludes or does not admit debate. Procedure. The act or manner of proceeding in any action or process. Proactive, peremptory procedure. Every time, all the time, we do it the same way, the right way. I don't care who we are. I don't care where we are. I don't care who's around us. I don't care how quickly we're having to move. We always do this the right way. We don't point guns at people we're not planning on shooting. Period. Loaded, unloaded, I don't care. Let me run through something here for a second. When you have a semi-automatic pistol, you take the magazine out first. Ah! And then you work the slide three times. One, two, three. You work the slide three times. Why do we do it three times? Because if a round comes out the first time, that's a clue. If a round comes out the second time, maybe we still have the magazine inside the gun. If a round comes out the third time, you still have a loaded gun. Hello? Magazine out. Work the slide three times. We're still not going to point at anybody. Anyway, when I come back, I want to talk to you about what do you do if you're in a class, an instructor is doing this kind of stuff. Well, let me ask you, what do you do in a class if the instructor is waving a gun around and pointing at students? 866-TALK-GUN. I bet I know. You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. Now, 
No, no, no. I am not done talking about gun safety here with my rant here. We're talking about the firearms instructor who shot and killed a state policeman. Because the gun somehow misfired. No, 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 no. When a gun misfires, it doesn't go off. It wasn't an accident. Now, I, I, it wasn't intentional. I get that. But not being, when something is not intentional, doesn't mean it's an accident. It's negligence. If you pull the trigger of a gun and shoot it while it's pointing at somebody else, the very best you can say is that's negligence. If you didn't unload the gun and then you pull the trigger and it goes off, then you're responsible. Basic rule, right? It's not an accident. The gun didn't somehow misfire. Let me return to this thing. This is very important. When you are unloading your gun, you take the magazine out of your semi-auto. Finger is straight along the side. Keep your finger outside of the trigger guard, okay? Not on the top of the trigger guard. Up, 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 alongside the slide. Because if it's alongside or crosses over the trigger guard, the finger can drift, drift in. You can grab the gun. The finger can hit the trigger. It can go off. Up, up, up. Raise that finger up so it's alongside the slide. Magazine out. We're removing the source of ammunition. Now we're going to work the slide hard three times. Rack, rack, rack. Then we're going to pull it back, the slide, and we're going to roll the gun over with our fingers still laid out straight along the side of it, and we're going to look. We're going to visually inspect and make sure there's not a round in the chamber. Wow, Tom. Are you some kind of safety geek? You bet your bippy I am. Now, question for you. You're in a concealed carry class. You're in any other kind of firearms class. And the instructor, grizzled old veteran, is a little casual about muzzle discipline. Somehow sweeps the class. What are you going to do? Time for you, as the saying goes, to pull up your big boy pants or your big girl pants and speak up in no uncertain terms and say, hey, watch that muzzle. Yes, it will embarrass him. Good. Nothing teaches better than embarrassment in front of a group. You'll never do that again. If he says, I've been doing this for years. Well, then you know what? You should know better, would be my response. And if I don't get from the instructor something at that point that says, thanks, I appreciate that. I'm sorry about that. If I get any kind of attitude that denotes that, I shouldn't have said something. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to walk out of the room. And I don't care if I forfeit the money I put into the class. I don't care. Could you get shot for $200? For $100? bucks? i am leaving. If a, an instructor is running an unsafe class, if there's not enough instructors for the number of students there and the ratio should be no more than one to five, if you've got 10 students, there ought to be two instructors. You need that pair of eyes out there. You need that many sets of eyes. You are responsible for your safety. No one else. If you put up with this, if we collectively put up with this, we harm all of us. As we have accidents, it plays into the hands of the antis and the gun banners. Not to mention the fact that we have accidents and people get hurt. You have to be a gun safety fanatic. You should know the four rules of gun safety. You should practice them. They should become like a religious mantra to you. You always return to them. It defines who you are as a gun owner. Anything less is simply less, and it's simply unacceptable. Yes, I'm a pain in the rear on that stuff. Make no apologies for it whatsoever. You should be too. Your family deserves to have you come home at the end of the day. When we come back, rimfire rifles and how to get them to shoot even better. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.